Shalom, we the real Hebrew Israelites, coming to you week in, week out, prophesying the truth and the return of the Heavenly Father to set up his everlasting kingdom for you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, so-called. First and foremost, I want to give all praise and glory and honor to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahawah Karkadash, which is translated to the Heavenly Father name, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, the son name who the world ignorantly and willingly calls Jesus and Jehovah and compare to idols. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, which the Most High set up in true sincerity and charity. The Holy Prophets back to dead in the reincarnation on the highways and badways, doing what's commanded. Shalom to all your brothers that listen and believe as well, not just here in America, but scattered abroad. But Lord willing, I want to go into this topic real quick on uh, uh, the cuts of uh, the virgin birth. Because those in the know, those who read the scriptures, Mary did have a child, and the scriptures gonna tell you. Lord willing, I want to make it quick. Just pull out a few uh, scriptures, man, like the uh, the law of marriage and um and what true wedding is, okay. And uh, Lord willing, I hope this lesson be edifying as well as precepts, letting you know that how a shot came in the flesh with a real ignorantly and willingly called Jesus. There's no virgin birth. That's madness. Angels don't have sex. Okay, but it was prophesied here in <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, when you look up that word, vir this was a prophecy. It was prophesied that our Lord and Savior was going to come like this. And Lord, willing to get some more precepts to uh, make the point uh, more clear, which I have written down right here. But point being is, uh, when you look up the word virgin, there's two types of versions. In this word, in Hebrew, it's the Hebrew. In this uh, particular chapter right here, the Hebrew word for that virgin is Isla Ma, which is a young woman of marriageable age, when you look it up. And another Hebrew word for virgin, which can be found in Deuteronomy, is Bafuala, which is also an actual virgin. Now, Mary herself will be considered the Bafuala first, but then when she uh, had sex with uh, uh, Joseph, she would be considered as an Isla Ma. Okay? Either way it goes, it's both, but you got to use it in its proper sense. And knowing that, because uh, that was, and again, knowing that, we're going to jump to uh, or the law of uh, marriage. This is Exodus 22 and 16. And if a man entice a maid that is betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. If, a, if her father refuse to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of the virgins. And a dowry is basically like a money or a, a gift given for the uh, the virginity of a woman. That's what a dowry is. Like you either give money or land, you know, things like that. And another word for that word made in the Hebrew, it goes back to bafuala. Point being is me pulling this out, let you know uh, this is the law of marriage. This is how marriage went, okay? Because we know marriage is sex, according to scriptures. So according to scriptures, there's a customs and there's a way things was kept. Okay, you have the law of marriage. You have to do this and that. You have the true wedding, which we finna get. You have to do this and that. And the tokens of virginity to state that this was a virgin and so on and so forth, which you can read in Deuteronomy, uh, the twenty second chapter, I believe, starting at uh, like the 13, 13 verse to like twenty one, I believe. But this is uh, on the Hegel scripture on the true wedding. This is Genesis 29, verse 20. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had for her. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go unto her. So Jacob was saying, Give me my wife so I can go unto her, I mean, have sex, and the whole ceremony is going to follow after that. Okay, because why? Because she was uh, betrothed, which means promise. And when you look up the word espouse, a spouse is not betrothed when you look it up in a blue letter, but you have to look it up on the etymology 
as well as watch the elders of great millstone which a spouse means mary okay and we finna get it the whole point that mary was not a virgin okay because again a spouse means mary betroth means promise to when you look it up verse 21 Verse 22, and Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And it came to pass at the even point being this, he made a feast because this is a true wedding. Okay, this is how the wedding went. This is how the wedding go. And again, Leah, uh, his wife, Leah, was uh, betrothed to Jacob, which means promise. Okay, and he wanted to go into her, meaning he wanted to... Uh, uh, make it official How you make it official Laying down the cloth Take in a tent After the feast and the ceremony You pop her The cloth uh, The token of her virginity Which you can read In Deuteronomy 22 Starting at 13 through 21 Okay so these are the uh, Our laws Our statutes Our commandments Our customs Which we kept back then Marriage is not putting a ring on a finger man. Marriage is sex Okay, but now that uh, what the true wedding in Genesis, uh, the law of marriage in Exodus, and then the token of virginity, you can read that on your own and do the Romans 22 and 13, starting at 21, unless you know. Now, again, back in this Isaiah 7 and 14, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Okay. And, uh, you know, that was just a translation, okay, another title, because we know his name is Yahweh Shai, because he's going to save his people from his sins when you read in Matthews. But point being, now let's get the scriptures proving that she wasn't a virgin. Now, uh, uh, we're going to jump to, uh, I'm going to jump to Isaiah first. So Isaiah 8 and 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So if they tell you that there's a virgin birth, they're not speaking according to the law, such commandments, and it's plain. There's no light in them. These pastors, these people on the highways and byways, they're not speaking according to this. Warning you, hey, stay away from them. Uh, Isaiah 28 and 10, real quick. It's Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. That's how you get somebody to understand, okay? Well, Willem, we're going to bring out precepts proving that Mary was not a virgin. It is, uh, uh, because the scripture says, Psalms 119 and 104, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Uh, Mary being a virgin is a false way. Uh, an angel impregnated her is a false way. So-called Esau Edomites, which is a so-called white, so-called white man, which is Esau Edom, the red devil, can be saved. That's false. Okay, saying that uh, the RFID chip that's here in America is not the mark of the beast is false. Saying America is not in the scriptures and will be destroyed, that's false, man. Because the scriptures and the precepts give us all these. What's a precept? A commandment. This whole book is the law, man. So they're not speaking according to this. There's no light in them. Point being is why I brought that out. But I'm going to start uh, and I get into the cut real quick. This Romans. Chapter 9, verse 1. I say the truth in Hamashiach, which is to translate the anointing one, which is the Hebrew word for Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow on my heart. And the Hebrew word for heart is your mind, your love. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen. According to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Because the law of the command was only given to Israel, no other nation, as well as our Lord and Savior. Salvation is only for us, Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and the confusion of the face that's scattered amongst these other nations. That bloodline goes back to these men because you trace uh, your heritage, your uh, lineage, your identity through the men, according to Numbers 1 to 18. Uh, uh, read on whose are the fathers this is the point whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Hamashiach came who is over all God blessed forever and again Hamashiach is Christ because he say 
whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God bless forever. Now you know, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach came in the flesh. That's one scripture. And the next scripture we're going to get, we're going to grab Hebrews 2 and 6 and John 1 and 14. Real quick. This Hebrews 2 verse 6. Yeah, Hebrews 2 and 6. Uh, matter of fact, Hebrews 2 and 16. So lock it. For verily he took, matter of fact, we gonna, I'm going to read this Galatians first before I get to Hebrews. Let you know who it's talking about. Because that's the whole, that's, hey, that's the whole point of uh, a man of the Lord, man. And a true teacher to get you to understand who the scriptures is for us, who it's written to. This is Galatians 4 and 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he be a child, defer nothing from being a servant, though he be Lord of all. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so, when we were ch children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. And that's the point. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that they, that we might receive the adoptions of sons. And you know the Lord only dealing with us. So I'll let you know, when the time came, according to the prophecy found in Isaiah 7 and 14, God sent forth his son, made of a woman. Who was that woman? Mary, under the law, man. Okay? So you got to understand, hey, our Lord and Savior came in the flesh, man. Regardless what anybody say, this, uh, uh, I'm going to get this real quick. This is John chapter 1, verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the word is Yahweh Shah, the word was made flesh. Okay, precept upon precept. Uh, next one, we're going to get uh, uh, Matthews 1. And all this to say, man, uh, Mary was not a virgin. It's plain. You can look at the elders' videos, brothers, the countless videos on it, okay? But this is uh, Galatians chapter 1, verse, start at 1. The book of the generations of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Okay? That, that's plain. He came in the, 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 the seed, and the, he was conceived. He came in the seed. Okay, he was made flesh, man. How plain could it get? These are precepts letting you know, leading up to the big point going back in Matthew, the first chapter. 1 and 18. Okay, since I'm here, I'm going to read it. Now, the birth of Yahweh Shah Mashiach was on this wise. When as his mother, Mary, was a spouse to Joseph. Mary, a spouse means Mary, okay? Before they came together. Before they came together, it's talking about the whole ceremony. Okay? The whole ceremony process. The true wedding. How the wedding should go. Uh, the laying down a cloth and uh, the going in a tent. And, uh, popping up for the tokens of Virginia. So on and so forth. All the feasts and ceremonies. This never took place, okay? They 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 met, they just had sex, they they conceived, and this is what it was, man. This is a big controversy topic. Not to get too deep, it's plain as in they had sex, they had our Lord and Savior, man. And how you know that? Hey, we could jump to the uh Luke. This Luke uh uh Luke 4 and 22, and all bear him witness and wondered at his gracious words, which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? Okay, so even back then they knew, is this Joseph's son? Not no angel son. Why? Because angels don't have sex, man. We finna get that scripture for you too. Everybody knew back then that's what Joseph's son, man. Joseph came out of the uh, lineage of David, man. The house of David, when you read. This Genesis 24, I'm going to lock it. This Matthew is 24, and uh, uh, 24 and uh, Salakia. Let's 
looks alike. Uh, oh, it's a lot. All right, Gen, uh, Matthews 22 and 30. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as, but are as the angels in heaven. Point being, angels don't have sex, man. And that's the point on that. You know? But uh, real quick, before I get interrupted, hey, that's the point, man. And I'm going to pull this last scripture out of Hebrews 2 and 16. Hebrews 2 and 16. Uh, uh, for as much as that, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Talk about you how it shall when you read through that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through the fear of death for all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. Talk about your how about your shy. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. Talk about your how about your shy. The world even called Jesus. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. And things pertaining to God. To make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For he himself has suffered being tempted. He is able to secure them that are tempted. And we know that Satan tempted our Lord and Savior. But he cut him with scriptures. He showed us the way. He's the author and finisher of our faith man. So a person are preaching this, teaching this, precept upon precept, according to Isaiah 20, there's no law in them. Because going back to Matthews 1, that's the whole point of it. And that's why I broke it down to you, so you can understand it. And Lord willing, I want to be quicker than this, but it's a locket for being long-winded. But just reading it over, man. This Matthews 1 to 18. Now the birth of your house, Shahamashiach, was on this wise. When as his mother, Mary, was a spouse to Joseph, which means Mary, a spouse, Okay, before they came together, before they came together, men, before the, the ceremony and things like that, because the Esau eat him, the devil, he changed things, he changed everything, he even changed things in the scriptures. Can't take stuff for face value, you got to follow the elders, man. They did it already. I'm just bringing out research and information. I'm bringing out information, which is research, just to understand and teach, which I'll receive myself. No, I, hey, hey it, it's plain. Then uh, Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Why? Because uh, if they would have went through the whole ceremony process and laying down the cloth, they would have thought that Mary uh, was not a virgin, man. It would have been a big thing going on. They probably would have stoned her and put anything would have happened, man. Why? Because of, according to how things went as far as the tokens of virginity. It wasn't going to be there, man. That's why Joseph put her away. You know, and that's why it happened the way it happened. The Lord had it happen the way it happened. Because the Lord could do what he want. But point being is that's the that's the breakdown on it. Uh, but while he taught on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appears to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take thee, to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. So she was already his wife. When we uh, sex is marriage, we read to you in Genesis. That's what a true wedding is. Okay, you go into the woman, had a feast, and this and that, going to tent, lay down a cloth, pop it. That's the tokens of virginity. That's a true wedding. And we gave you the law of marriage. If you wanted a woman, hey, you, you go to the father, you pay the father, and boom, this is what it is. You take her to be your wife. You got to take care of this and that. She's yours once you go into it. You can't put her away, man. Okay? And uh, and the angel let him know, man. Hey, he is of the Holy Spirit. The, 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 your child that's in her conceive. That's that he's of the Holy Spirit. Verse twenty one, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And that's his name, Yahweh Shai. He deliver. He salvation. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of. The Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which has been interpreted, God is with us. Okay, because his true name is Yahweh Shai, not Jesus, not Emmanuel, man. Those are false titles. And this going back into the prophecy that was spoken in Isaiah 7 and 14. But Lord, will hope that that's what's edifying. I want to give all praise and glory and honor to Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. 
It's the most I set up to teach, to rule well. Shalom to all your awkward that listen, believe as well. On the four corners, scattered abroad. Shalom.